What's up, guys? Today we're going to talk about Penn State. We're going to talk about the defense and the miscommunication issues, especially against Maryland and the Terrapins at Beaver Stadium. You can tell in this game Penn State wasn't ready. They, you can tell they missed a spring. You could tell things weren't fluid, and it was very apparent in this game. Maryland made them look stupid with the three passing touchdowns in the first half. Let's dive into this. Let's talk about some issues. But remember, this is the last video of the spring. Subscribe, like it, comment, guys. We want to know feedback. We want to hear what's going on. Can't wait to talk in the fall. Let's do this. This is a concept that the Maryland Terrapins ran more than once in this game. This is simple, simple defense. Um, this is basically what they call a man banjo look. So basically, you've got two for two. Notice how these receivers are stacked one and two. Well, the corner and the safety who are playing man-to-man -man here with one high free safety and cover one are basically going to have to dictate with who's going to take what. This corner is playing low and pressed, and this safety is playing high and off to match the same levels that you're getting from the receivers. So first things first, let's fast forward this so you can watch it. All right, notice the inside release by the outside receiver. This is going to force the corner to make contact so that he can railroad that outside receiver to the safety. Now, what they're going to do is they're going to decipher and they're going to split. So basically what happens in this situation, if this receiver goes in, then this safety has to take that kid. If this receiver goes out, then that corner has to take him. This is a simple banjo beater. What they're going to do is they're going to release themselves vertically, okay? And now this slot receiver is going to push himself out like they're about to run a switch route, and then he's going to bang the slant, knowing that this corner is going to take him because – the outside receiver went inside, went vertical. So watch, really, really good route. One, two, three. Notice how the receiver has now set himself up. That corner is going to try to drive on the out. It's not there. Their slant back off of the quick out right here is, was wide open, and you're right over the middle. This is the beautiful thing about man. You know, you're going to bring the house, but if you don't make it home, it's going to be a rough night for you. Now, this is a simple rule and understanding. Watching the safety right here, you can tell the safety's eyes are at the quarterback. Notice how the quarterback opens himself up and looks for the slot fade because Maryland's been known to throw that, and that safety's trying to get over the top to help, but he overshoots this and misses the slant on the inside. And then this is just bad tackling, bad angles, and actually truly out-athleted by the Maryland receiver. Watch it from the end zone. Really find this interesting. You can kind of see how the safety starts trailing. Notice the adjuster. They determine everything that's going up front. Look up front right now. You 100% can tell there's a communication issue. It's not even the back end. It's the front end, too. Notice these guys don't have a clue what's going on right here. They've overloaded four to a side, okay? And, again, they should have gotten home here. This should never happen, okay? This should never happen. You should never have the same guy peeing in the same Coke bottle as another guy. That's why this rush never got home, which allowed us this time right here and allowed that receiver to catch that ball on the angle route you got the corner chasing a guy who, who never had a chance because he was out of leverage. Let's fast forward to the next drive. I want to show you this. Again, same formation. Notice the adjuster. The man comes over. Now we get man because this DB came scrumming over with this receiver. So the quarterback knows I have a man beater involved over here. This time they're staying too high. You've got cover two man. Okay, we're manning up on these guys here. Okay, which means now we have our Four, five guys in the box go one-on-one. -on -one. Now, this should be an easy play. Now, watch what happens, okay? There it is. Same exact concept. They know they're about to banjo. Now, the corner is going to play inside leverage, and he's going to press the inside with his butt toward the ball, and he's going to hold this guy one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to inside release to get the corner to bail onto it. The slot receiver now is going to press outside, and now they know for a fact they're not going to banjo this. Here's how they know. They know they made the mistake banjoing. So now they're going to play true man. They're going to play butt to the ball. He's going to press and hold the inside. He's going to take him where he wants to go. He's going to let him inside. He's going to railroad this guy, and he's going to run with him everywhere he goes, which means the safety now is going to have to take this slot receiver by himself. Well, right now it looks like he's running a wheel route. But when he puts his foot in the ground, he's now going to trail that corner, all right, and he's going to open himself up for another angle route. And you've got yourself in a really bad situation again. Let's watch from the beginning. Now, middle linebacker was still in the window, but never did anything with it. But watch. I love the route by the slot receiver. He pushed himself one, two, three, puts his foot in the ground. He trails behind. All right, and there's your beater when it comes to man. Again, second drive. 
Maryland knew that Penn State was going to try to run man and they were going to try to rub off. So Penn State does banjo. They run a banjo beater. The next drive, they know Penn State's not going to run banjo. So now they know they can set it up even more and they can really rub it off. And that's an easy touchdown. Again, watch the upfront what's going on with the motions. Okay. Look right here what's going on. This is, again, a situation where miscommunication is not here. Look at the, the middle linebackers in charge of this vacated spot. This slant should never be open versus man with a middle linebacker sitting in the window. Okay. He waits too long, jumps late, doesn't stay in the middle, and it's a bad play for them. Okay. So we've seen them get beaten man just based on the fact that you can tell they're not used to that concept. Let's talk about run fits. You have second down in like 20. The first down marker is up here, okay? It's second in a mile. So Penn State comes in with what they call a simulated pressure or sim pressure. They're going to simulate pressure and they're going to fail to make the quarterback try to make a bad decision. Now, they get in a trips nub set and they know we're going to be able to get ourselves in a situation. And so now you've got three over three, you've got two over one, and the running back becomes the fourth guy. Now, the problem with what they're doing in the simulated pressure is simulated pressures put you in a bad spot when it comes to the run game. So you can see what's happening right here. They're out leveraged, and it's a huge run play for Maryland. Now, let's watch the end zone so you can get a real feel of what I'm talking about when it comes to just run fits and miscommunication. Here we go. They're trying to run a double A gap simulated pressure. Now, again, this is just an old school pin pull. All, right? all they're going to do is they're going to pin the inside. You got to understand something. This is the corner and this is the safety. The only thing outside of this is these two guys right here. Now, okay, so they're going to pin it down. We showed you earlier what it looks like. Tight end is going to come down on the linebacker. Tackle is going to come down on that four eye. That guard's going to pull and kick the first thing he sees. Center is going to pull and he's going to wrap to the next thing he sees. Right guard is going to pull and he's going to try to get to the first guy in that A gap. And tackle is going to try to get the next thing he sees. This is a pin and pull. Watch how it works. They try to simulate pressure. When you sim pressure, watch the linebacker turn his back. He doesn't have a chance. Middle linebacker bails himself out. He makes a good read. When this thing gets washed down, all right, you created an extra gap. So again, they're not out gapped here. Linebackers playing inside. You have the corner playing outside and that safety has to fit the alley. Go back to the miscommunication issues. This linebacker should be sitting in this inside gap so the safety can fit outside gap because the corner's done a good job and forced it back in. Linebacker goes out, safety goes out, and you get a touchdown. That is just bad football, especially when it comes to the communication issue behind it. Okay, here we go. Now let's watch it here. You're going to see the adjuster. Nobody trails the adjuster. That means they're in zone. Quarterback knows it. Everyone knows it. So what they're going to run right here is they're going to run a quarters beater. You're going to get cover six. And cover six means you're going to get a quarter player here, okay? You're going to get a quarter player here, and you're going to get a half player here, meaning this corner's got a quarter, this safety has a quarter, and this safety has half the field. He's two yards outside the hash, and he's got hash the sideline. This receiver down here is in cover two. He's going to try to railroad everything and make sure that there's no inside slot play. Now, let's watch from the background. When we know we're in quarters, okay, or quarter, quarter, half, this receiver becomes the read player, which means that this safety, okay, if I undo this, so you can get a feel for it. Right now in this situation, this safety is reading this kid and this corner is reading this kid. If this kid goes vertical, all right, that means that the safety and the corner are going to bail and they'll rally late to anything deep. If this number two guy goes out, the corner will jump it and the safety plays over the top of anything coming. If this, if this receiver was to play anything on the inside, meaning he goes inside, the safety's going to stay high. He passes it on and the corner just bails over the top and the linebacker plays underneath. But this is what they call a quarters beater. This receiver is going to press vertically now, okay? Notice that everyone's running and reading it, okay? Now, at some point in time, this kid's going to press out. No matter what coverage you're in, every zone coverage turns into man at some point. And Maryland figured out when it turned into man. It turned into man at about 8 to 10 yards. Notice that the corner, red number two, saw him drive out, so the corner's going to drive this, 
Well, the safety figures this is deep enough already, so he drives on it, which leaves the outside receiver wide open. This route is going to be wide open one way or the other because this linebacker is going to be taken out of the picture with the flat player right here. But if you look, if this corner fails, this safety has to drive down on a speed out, which is hard to do, and he throws a speed out. All he's watching right now is he's watching that safety. Does the safety take this out or does the safety take the post? Safety takes the out, drill the skinny post, okay? And that's a quarter speeder. That's just communication. That's all it is. This is a great example of the lack of practice done during spring ball. And you could tell the miscommunication was a huge issue. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, this is the last film of the spring. If there's anything you guys want to see, let us know. Like, comment, and hit subscribe. Appreciate you guys.